Hello and uh, welcome to Cheshire Audio. This is this is just a quick, sort of almost newsy type, um, sort of quick video really. Um, loads going on in the shop at the moment. I just thought I might as well just do a, just do a run around the shop and just see what 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 we're up to um, in the workshop at the moment. Got to just show you what's on on the bench. Um, it's actually busy on the bench recently. Um, had a bit of a queue going on. Uh, plenty two there. Had a bit of a speed issue sorted down. That's, that's being sent back to the customer. Um, I kind of posted it without any packaging, so it's a bit, going to be a bit tricky to send back to. It seems to have lots of name bits in it at the moment. Um, the Unity 2, which has almost been killed off by its, by a dry belt that doesn't work properly. And we're struggling to get a dry belt for it. Um, nice CD3. Um, that might be, might be fixed. <laughs> I've run it a few times, I think I've sorted it. Uh, got a lovely old... They are legend in at the moment, which is unfortunate. This has been stored in a garage and all the, all the veneers coming off and it's just, it's in a really sad state really. The uh, main bearing is in a really bad state, it's really worn out. Um, Tire arm cables kind of had it and the guy doesn't really want to spend any money on it. So we've sort of, it can, we've made it so it kind of works. Um, kind of works 99% sort of thing. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to take it, see how he goes and spend some money on it in the future. But it's quite an interesting one, really like the legend. When it came out, it's a really good deck. Sort of in the what would it be, end of the eighties sort of thing. The legend was was fairly, fairly common then. Um, yeah, sort of matching my AR speakers there. AR legend. Uh, what else is going on? Um, it's fairly untidy at the moment. Actually, I'm not used to having. This is, these are all the boxes for the Riga uh, that's in for repair at the moment. Um, sort of <laughs> random packaging. Um, we've got um, the shop. What's going on in the shop? I'll just turn Neil down. Um, turn Neil down just in case YouTube objects. Uh, we've taken on exposure, which is various bits of exposure around the place. Um, now that's a brand I dealt with years and years ago and loved it. Um, actually, I owned quite a bit of exposure over the years as well, to the 80s, 90s. Uh, and it was always sort of the better but unheard of sort of competitor to name, really. Because uh, Exposure have never really sort of done much in the way of, of self-promotion. They do the adverts in magazines and things like that, but they don't, they don't really sort of push themselves forward and do big marketing sort of like, um, campaigns or anything like that. But all their stuff has always been very good, and I think probably because a lot of the money that they could spend on marketing, they spend on the product. So it does, you know, it pays, it pays dividends. Um, and they've kind of stuck with the ethos that Name had years ago of, of keeping it pure. Um, not really any superfluous sort of componentry in there and you know no bluetooth or anything like that going on uh, name have sort of strayed from that which is why i've kind of made a decision not to do it um but yeah we've got the yeah, like i say cd player that's a little integrated amp that's the sort of more traditional looking that they've made amps looking that look like that for years and years and years that's a 2510 um we've got some monoblocks down here which are the big monoblocks which um are kind of a modern equivalent i suppose to, to uh, name 135 if you remember that um, kind of the same sort of money, same sort of driving ability. Um, what else is going on here? There's a uh, planar 8. Um, I need to go back to a customer, which I need to get delivered. Uh, probably this week, I think. Uh, what else is on? Yeah, more exposure. Uh, little monoblocks, which are fantastic. Um, that's the little preamp. I also got their Ferno stage and the bigger integrated, which you might have seen in... Um, I did a... What did I do with that one? Uh, that was a speaker setup. Yeah, I used that on the speaker setup video. Uh, the the 3510. I'm learning the numbers. The 3510. Um, oh, the other thing we've got here. That's this is somebody asked, asked me what this was. What this was the other day because this this was in the speaker setup video as well. Um, but I couldn't for some reason I couldn't reply to him. It didn't let, didn't actually let me reply to him. This is a turntable by a company. It's, I think the company's called Opera and it's a consonant Opera consonants. Uh, and this is called the wax engine, which is a bit probably a bit pretentious, but um, it's a company who are thinking of importing it, and they've just sent it to me to, to try out. And it's it, I haven't actually had a chance to do it yet. I've not even put a cartridge on, but they've sent, they've sent some cartridges because they're at the same company do some really good cartridges, which I've heard before and are superb. So I'm kind of hoping that the deck, the deck itself, will be superb as well. It's rough, roughly based. There's a few um, details on this of, uh, that are similar to the well-tempered. Uh, turn to a uh, turntable which if you've, if you've ever come across that it's quite an interesting design the well tempered so th there is a sort of family link to the well tempered uh, what else is going on we just just had a big thunderstorm outside but we'll take you upstairs 
up to the dim rooms without, without falling over. Um, oh, we've got um, various bits of neat in at the moment. Neat have lent, lent us a few, um, a few speakers to try out. These are the orchestras, which are absolutely wonderful, actually. I really like the orchestras. Um, only had a brief listen to them yesterday, but um, re yeah, really liking those. Ribbon treble unit, um, isobaric loaded bass. Um, quite big, I can't stop bringing up the stairs. What else are they doing? Um, and uh, there's the. No, I should take those downstairs yet. Yeah, that's the uh, the Ophidian mam um, Mambos that we use the day. And we've got the um, the neat Explorers. So these are the IOTA Explorer, the big IOTA. I've actually got the, the two extra. That's the uh, no, the normal IOTA that you see with the, with the Explorer. You can sort of see the difference of it. Um, all have this sort of sloping sloping baffle. The Explorers are, are an isobaric. The um, the Alphas have. I think I've shown you this before. There's a second another driver underneath. Uh, so it's that, that's a sort of twin cabinet design. There's a little it's a standard iota at the top and like a sealed, sealed cab, um, ported cabinet on the bottom and a, a driver that points down. Um, both of these are amazing actually. Fit, you know, they're not actually particularly massive speakers. I'll just put something there for, for reference. I'll put a record in front of it. You know, just to give you an idea of scale, neither of them are particularly big speakers. I suppose the Explorer is quite is wider than you'd normally get nowadays, but um, yeah, big sort of um, big soundstage, really you know big room filling sound, very very clear, very good at acoustic stuff. Um, both of you, in fact, say ribbon trouble units, much higher end ribbon trouble units on that. I'll do a proper review on these actually, and I'll um, perhaps even read up on what that, what the, the driver units are called. Um, I should have met, I should have asked my mate Stephen actually who's he works at Neat because he's um, he's the one to ask for drive units. He knows everything about drive units. So um, yeah, so that's those. Oh, this is going on. I think pretty much that's what that's what's what we're up to at the moment. I think the little den rooms have just been used to actually to store a few bits at the moment because we're so busy at the moment. Um, all this is to do with a Sondak which is just in for service. It's got a fault. There's a fault on it. It brought his preamp as well, but I think there's something going on with the deck. Um, so that's just in for testing, and I've just not, I'm hoping to get onto that today. When I'm clear downstairs, I'm going to get that done. Um, that's this is a P3, which is second, um, three month old PC, yeah, three months old P3, which is second second hand if you want one. Um, so that's available. It's probably just I'll probably just stick it in the back and forget it's there. No, me. So yeah, there you go. That's what we're up to. Um, going to do a few more reviews soon. Um, possibly, like I said, probably do the, the, do the neats. Um, I was, somebody suggested doing a, a review of phono stages, which is quite a good idea as well, so I'll probably, I'll probably do, have a think about that one, but most of the phono stages I do are actually out on loan at the moment, so I can't really gather enough together. And then, and, and some of them are on big waiting lists as well. There's a lot of, a lot of hi-fi equipment at the moment is on really big waiting lists. Um, I sugged them for one. Uh, some Riga stuff's on big waiting lists. There's a lot of cartridges, Nagoka and Audio Technica, and um, who else are on? Some of the autophones, some of the Rigas, up to a point. Where there's, um, yeah, they've did, actually did, they've actually finished one of the Riga models. Uh, they stopped making the Elise because they couldn't get parts. Um, but that should be a bit of Riga news. That should be coming back. I think I reckon a couple of months the Elise will be back. Uh, there is quite a lot of Riga news actually, but I, most of it, well, I can't tell you any of it actually, but that's, that'll come shortly. There's quite quite a lot of new things coming from Riga. Some things have just been updated, some things are brand new. Um, big news from Riga actually is that they've actually stopped making all their speakers, apart from the little kite, which was a new model. Uh, and this is all down to the costs of having cabinets made. All the speaker manufacturers are struggling with this at the moment, and there have been some quite big price rises from some, some manufacturers. Uh, and Riga didn't really want to go down the path of putting a big, you know, 30-40% price hike on their on their stuff. So, uh, which I don't know, I don't know what I think about that really. But because uh, really, really like the Riga speakers, and uh, left leaving a big gap in the shop really, as to you know, um, particularly our X3s, which we did, we did quite well with. So there you go. Yeah, um, as as I can tell you about Riga, I'll, uh, Riga stuff, I'll uh, I'll sort of fill you in. If you want to ring me at the shop, I might be able to. Might be able to give you a bit of a rundown on things, but um, yeah, I'm not really <laughs> not supposed to have said that. I'm not supposed to do that. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, if you like the video, I know just a, just a quick one. Don't forget to subscribe. We've just passed 600 subscribers. 
um, which is just a, I don't, I don't get it. I <laughs> uh, don't get why people want to watch somebody waffling about hi-fi, particularly me. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for that. It's been, it's much appreciated. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll stick the name and address at the, at the end of the video. Sorry this is a bit rushed, but literally I've just put the kettle on for a coffee. So oh, I'll do a video. So I've done, I've done a video. Um, yeah, see you soon. Thanks very much.